What's up YouTube, Team Inception here with uh, kind of um, a new segment I want to start doing at the first of every month before the ban list change um, and it is going to be what my opinions are on uh, possible future changes for the said ban lists um, but before I do, uh, we, my mom and me went to the car dealership today and we managed to get this um, she paid 1200 for it, and there was, like, a warranty or whatever that was added that was, I think, 1800 So, and there were some other things that were added on top of that, which made it come to about 15, I think it was 1580 something like that. Um, but yeah, the car is amazing, actually. It's actually very, very nice. The inside is leather, and it's got a whole bunch of cool features. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, at the end of the video, I guess I can tell you guys a little story about it so far, you know, that we've actually already had regarding this car. Um, but it is a very nice car. It even has seat warmers. <laughs> but anyways, I don't know how long this video is actually going to be, so I'm going to kind of hurry it up. And then uh, if there's time at the end of the video, I will explain the story. It's not that big of a deal or whatever, but yeah. Anyways, the... We're going to start with the Forbidden Cards. I made kind of a list of things that I think could change on the ban list, and I'm going to explain it. Now, before I do get into this, this is not my ban list prediction or anything like that. I'm not going to, I'm not saying that everything that, is, that I actually mention here is going to happen or should happen all at the same time or whatever. This is not my ban list prediction. This is just single cards that I think, you know, could change coming you know, in the upcoming ban list change. So, like I said, we're going to start with the Forbidden, and the top card on my list is Sangan. Now, the reason why I think Sangan could possibly go to zero is because it searches out a plethora, I guess that could be the right word, a lot, if it's not the right word, then just straight up a lot of monsters that you really, really do need. Um, popular targets these days are, well, in the TCG would be things like Wind Up Shark, Wind Up... Uh, rat, you know, a whole bunch of stuff like that. It searches out your rescue rabbits and all that other happy crap. It just sets you up for some serious plays. Um, with insectors, it's kind of like having another centipede, which is kind of over the top. Um, I don't really think that Sangan needs to stay around. Um, on top of that, Tour Guide and Tour Bus are both TCG exclusives, and they're unlikely to be hit anytime soon. We just got Tour Bus, so it's, nothing's going to happen to that. And Tour Guide still hasn't been released in Japan yet, so they can, they can't do anything with that. But Sangin still does make somewhat of an impact over there as well as it does here. Um, Sangin, you can pretty much splash into any deck, and it will actually work. So I, that's part of the reason why I think that that could go to zero. Um, but because Japan doesn't have the whole abuse with tour guide, it may not move at all. It's just something that I think they might or could do. Um, next is Dandelion. Plants just need to get hit one more time, and the last thing that I think they should hit is Dandelion. Being able to plop two tokens on the field, whether or not it's been used for an exceed summon, or just because it was sent to the graveyard for whatever reason, I think this is stupid. Um, the card really should go. I mean, it sets up a lot of, um what's it called, synchro plays and whatnot, it sets you up for tribute fodder in a later turn, like if you have a Kaius or whatever in your hand, um, you can use the tokens or Dandelion itself for enemy control order, you can do all kinds of shit with that, I just think that it really needs to go. Um, next is mind control, um, I really don't have to, I really shouldn't have to explain this all that much, um, it was limited purely because of the fact that ex or not ex uh, synchros and tuners were introduced into the game and eventually it became too overpowered for the game to leave it at 3. So they put it at 1. Now that we have exceeds who do not need synchros and non- or not synchros, tuners and non-tuners to make specific monsters and you could just take their level 4, summon a level 4 of your own and exceed some and it's kind of too good. So I think that mind control needs to get pushed down to 0 as well. Those are the only 3 cards that I managed to come up with regarding Forbidden. Now before I get into the limited, um, I've, seen, I've been seeing a lot of people saying, Oh, bring back Demok, bring back Demok. It, 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 it would be interesting to see it r around for another, f you know, for a format or whatever. Um, I'm going to tell you right now the reason why I think Demok will not come back. 
The reason why is because it is overly abusable. It's just way too abusable. It brings back spell cards immediately from your graveyard for no reason. You can bring back Duality, you can bring back Dark Hole, you can bring back Heavy Storm, etc, etc. When it leaves the field, it removes itself from play. Now the reason why this is significant is because of two cards. Different Dimension Reincarnation and Escape. Three cards if you want to count Return from the Different Dimension, but in a format where a lot of life points are being paid for double warnings and a solemn judgment, I don't really see people considering Return from the Different Dimension just for them to get warned or whatever. It would be kind of a major pain in the ass, and I, again, this is why I don't think they would use it. So that's why I only listed DDR and Escape. They both bring back Demok, and they give you back a spell card, which is just really, really good. I mean, if you have another DDR in your graveyard, you can add it to your hand, attack with Demok freely. If it gets removed from the field or whatever, it gets removed from play again anyways. So you just DDR it again, bring back DDR. I mean, there's a lot of discard fodder there, but it's still pretty broken. Which is the reason why I kind of don't like the idea of doing that. Now there's the other thing with, with uh, Gold Sarcophagus, being able to use DDR after you Gold Sark it from the deck and whatnot. It just seems like it's way too good. This is the reason why I think Demop will not come back. And if it does come back, then Konami's a freaking idiot. Well, everyone at Konami is an idiot. Um, except for, uh, I, 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 guess, I would guess, uh, Julia, Jason, Grabermeyer, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but you know, like, I mean, you know, the people who come up with the ban list. I don't think Julia is a part of that. Same with Jason. So, yeah. Anyways, let's get into the cards I think could or would be semi-limited. The first up is Dragon Dragonfly, or in other words, Insector Dragonfly. The reason why I put this on here and not Hornet is because limiting Hornet is the equivalent of basically limiting Infernity Archfiend and unlimiting Infernity Launcher. You only need the one card to make the thing work. The reason, and the, okay, like with Infernities, you can have one Archfiend, but that Archfiend can search out all of your Infernity Launchers. It's the same thing kind of with Insectors with Hornet. Hornet, you only need it in the hand or the grave. Once you have one in your hand or graveyard, you can immediately just start going off with it and it's just retarded. Uh, sure, you could DD Crow it or whatever, but I mean, they can still get another one just by using Dragonfly's effect. I mean, it doesn't matter how Hornet goes to the graveyard as, as long as it was equipped and goes to the graveyard. Um, and it's just retarded. So I think that Dragonfly would be the best bet because Dragonfly is what makes that whole play actually very viable. You bring out, or you summon Dragonfly, equip Hornet, Hornet goes, brings out Centipede, Centipede does the same thing with Hornet, and searches out another Dragonfly so you can do it all over again next turn. That's two free monsters on your field plus you blow up two cards. Uh, it's a little overkill in my opinion. So now up next is Zen Mains and Zen Mighty. Japan just got Zen mains and they got it really really quickly for some reason so that's a big hint that Zen mains might actually go to one um, and Zen Mighty, now everyone's probably going to argue with me and say, oh, well, this card's not the reason why the loop's so good. You're wrong, okay? When you think about it, the loop is based around being able to bring out three Zen Mighties and then going off by attributing each one for Hunter until there's no Zen Mighty left. Um, that usually results in at least discarding three cards from your opponent's hand turn one. Now, I mean, like with Pot of Avers and whatnot, you can proceed to continue and all that other happy crap. And that's the reason why I put Zen Mighty at one, or I would assume that if they touch Zen, or, you know, wind-ups at all, Zen Mighty will be the one that actually goes to one. The reason for that is because you need to be able to go into another Zen Mighty and continue by doing so, and you can't do that if there's only one. So, yeah. Anyways, next is uh, Rescue Rabbit. I'm not going to go into this very much because it's whatever. I mean, being able to go into a free log is whatever, and it also boosts a lot of other archetypes, even though Dino Rabbit is the biggest one. Ultimate Offering I added to this list because the whole Ultimate Offering thing with gadgets already is kind of retarded, and the ones that use DNA Surgery just, you know, make Logia even more broken. Um, I put Snow on here because Snow is kind of... They're reinforcing the army, and it's not hard to trigger at all. Uh, you discard it for gates, bring another gates to your hand, etc., etc. Um, if you have another snow in your hand, you can just search out a Grapha and all that, and my friend is, you know, messaging me about some Justin Bieber shit. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, but yeah, the fact that it searches out a whole bunch of cards is kind of whatever. 
Um, there are two cards on this that I actually think a lot of people may or may not like. Um, Tribe Infecting Virus and Tsukuyomi. Now, Tsukuyomi has been something that's been long overdue. The card is not broken. It's like a worse version of Book of Moon. Um, at best, it's probably just going to be used to flip strong monsters face down that have low defense, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, Leviathan Dragon, it has zero defense, so just flip it down and attack it. And even if they can protect it, it's going to be back to 2,000 anyways, and they'd have to detach again, and because it'd have no materials, it can't attack directly and shit, so it'd be kind of a pain in the ass for them. Um, but that's the main thing that I see with Tsukuyomi. Um, I already covered Zen Main, so the last thing on here is the Agent of Mystery Earth. The reason why I actually added this to the list is because you... Because I see a lot of people wanting to hit agents, and it, Earth helps you get... It, it basically starts your plays. You summon it, you search out your Venus, you sit on it, and, as well as maybe a dust shooter or whatever in your back row, and you let them kill that agent Earth, because you don't care if it's on the field in your hand or in your graveyard, as long as it's somewhere in one of those three spots, you can use it for Hyperion, and that's what makes Agent Earth so good. Um, it's not exactly the fact that you can summon Venus and summon three Shine Balls and whatnot, it's the fact that Earth brings it out and allows those plays to start even faster. Putting Earth to one also limits how many targets you actually have for, er, for Hyperion to actually remove from play as well, which means they may cut down to two Hyperions per build or whatever. So, I mean, it's just, you know, something that I think would be an interesting thing to experiment with. Now, on the semi-limited, I added Wind-Up Rat, just because it's a costless free summon from the graveyard. Um, it's kind of like playing Monster Reborn, but without being able to take their monster. And, I mean, it's still limited to level 4 or lower wind-ups. But at the same time, I think that it shouldn't stay at 3. It seems like an overpowered card, and I'm not exactly sure if it should actually be at 2, maybe even... At one, I mean the card's really good. So, um, next is Book of Moon. This card is, they've already started making their push for Exceeds. Now we need a way to counter them again. And Book of Moon is the excellent way to do that. I mean, it's it's something we really do need back in this game. Um, it's in every situation, it's basically a minus one. The only thing that is really good for is stopping Synchro Summons, exceed Summons, and being you know, like the occasional attacks or whatever. So, I mean, it's just something that I do think that we need back. And with the fact that it was released in Turbo Pack 7, it could. And this is part of the reason why I think that it might go down on the list. Um, next is another card that people that people are probably going to be like, Oh, hi, Kyle, you're retarded for thinking this. And when you put it, when you actually think about it, it's not as stupid as you think. The next card is Black Whirlwind. Now, the reason why I say this is because essentially Black Wings have five main targets when they summon Shura. Well, okay, I guess if you count Bora, but no, not many people actually search for that unless they want to go into an Exceeds, you know, or an Exceeds monster, or, you know. Um, the main targets that people usually go for are Kalu, Gale, and one of their two to three Blizzards. Um, the reason for that is obviously to set up a future play. Now, the reason why I think that Whirlwind could go to two instead of Gale or Kalu is because Kalu would be retarded. I mean, you could search out and summon at a later turn, search out your other Kalu and just do whatever. Gale, in my opinion, would make Black Wings way too overpowerful because you'd just be able to special summon it immediately and then have their monster and synchro into an armor master or whatever. It seems a little retarded. Um, Whirlwind allows you to search out at least the blizzards and stuff that you that you can use at a future turn And I think it's actually something that's worthwhile for black wings And I do think that they do need to have some kind of power back in some form or way Which is why I think that whirlwind could go to two. That's actually a personal choice on my part It's not something I see, can actually see happening because I know that Konami personally hates black wings at this point um but, I mean, it's something that I think that they should actually, you know, try out for a format and see how it actually does. Um, for the most part, everyone assumes Black Wings are dead, so I figure, why not try it? Um, this, or the next one only is if Dandelion actually does get banned, and it's Debris Dragon. Um, the main target that everyone goes for regarding Debris Dragon is Dandelion. Um... The next card after that, I, I put Lone Fire. That's another one that's only in case Daniel Lang goes, you know, gets banned. Um, 
It would add another target for Debris Dragon, yes, but Lone Fire would only basically be there for the sole purpose of bringing out Spore or Globe Bulb. Um, so, you know. Another one that I've seen on Pojo is Marshmallow. I do kind of have to agree with some of the reasoning. Spirit Reapers at 3 and has been considered infinitely better than Marshmallow in every way. Um, except for, I guess, uh, Chain Burn or whatever. Um, the only thing that's that I can actually see it, you know, being the reason for it to stay at one is the fact that if it's targeted, it doesn't do whatever. It just sits there and isn't destroyed in battle. Um, I can understand that being a reason to keep it at one, but I think that it would be okay to try it at two, much like they did with Reaper. I think it was the last format or the format before that. Um, so I mean, it's something I think that they should try. Um, next is Bestiari. Um, Gladiator beasts are kind of dead. I mean, they're still a decent deck and all, but they're just not doing enough, and I think Bestiarity 2 might actually help them. It's another card that I think that Konami should test out for a format, just to see how it does. It might add some versatility or whatever to the format, you know, but, you know, bring more decks into top tables and stuff, which is something I think the game really should have. Um, Mizuki to 2, again, another deck that really does need some more oomph is, you know, Zombies. I'm going to have to speed this up because the battery's dying. Um, Shien is the next one for the semi-limited. Uh, I think the six Amorites also need to have a little bit of power back, but I don't think that they need three Shiens to actually be good. Um, one is too little. I think two is just right. Now, in the Unlimiteds, we have Summoner Monk. Um, it's not doing anything right now, which is kind of surprising. I'm, su I'm honestly surprised that it's just not doing anything. Um... And it would be kind of an interesting thing to see how it, how it would actually perform in a format at 3. But it's something I also don't think would be very likely. Um, you might see all these little things next to all these names. Those are the maybes. Um, Destiny Draw, kind of the same thing. Destiny Engine is kind of outdated. Not many people are actually using it unless it's like Exodia or whatever. So I think that they should actually try it back at 3. Um, maybe not with Mizuki, like if, okay, if Mizuki goes to 2, I don't think that Destiny Drush should go to 3, just because then the Destiny engine would be all, all but retarded and everything, um, so, yeah. Next one, I kind of want one, or one of the two to happen, I don't expect both, um, Solemn Morning or Bottomless, um, I'm actually leaning closer to Bottomless because it actually is easier to stop. It, you can chain to it, go Forbidden Lance or whatever, and save your monster and whatnot. It's just something, you know, I think that should happen. It, we need more monster hate, in my opinion, but that's just me. Uh, Magical Stone Excavation, another card that no one's ever, no one's even using right now, so it's kind of retarded to keep it at 2. I think that it would be okay to test it at 3 for a format and see if it actually impacted the game at all. The last one is Dragodia. Dragodia, it's kind of, in my opinion, it's falling out of favor. Um, I don't see many people actually using it all that much anymore. Um, so, I mean, I figure and this is another one that I think that Konami should try it 3 for a format just to see how it does. Um, so yeah, those are some of my opinions on what might be able to change in the upcoming format. Um, I don't, there are probably more things than I can think of, but I just don't have the time to explain it, or the, the memory on this memory stick, or the battery life to actually do it. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think of, and you know, if you like any of the changes that they could do regarding what I mentioned, um, what kind of changes you would actually like to see yourself and whatnot so yeah click some stuff it always helps rate comment subscribe and all that um sorry for rushing at the end again the battery is dying i cannot wait to get my own camera and a new one at that um so yeah like i said click some shit rate comment subscribe share my video like it favorite it everything uh so yeah i might also be going to locals this weekend so i don't know if i'll be doing videos or not if i do go but yeah so, peace you guys, and hope you guys have a great tomorrow, because it's kind of late now. So just, you know, hope you guys have a good day tomorrow. Peace.